I was in a Mark Wahlberg movie. Funny as hell, it was the most horrible thing I could think of. Video game adaptations of films have been a common thing in gaming ever since the early days of the industry. And they aren't all that bad. GoldenEye is an amazing title, one of the best games for the N64 and a huge part of my childhood. Then there was Scarface, which I never played, but I want to solely to hear the rage of Tony Montana. But what happens when you flip this around? Do video games make good movies? Not always. Okay, maybe almost never. Yet apparently, someone thinks there will be enough hype and support for a movie based on Grand Theft Auto. As usual, with anything to do with GTA, a bunch of websites publish articles almost instantaneously saying how a GTA movie is apparently in the works or in the early stages of production. And leave it to people like Yan on Twitter who thankfully point out just how wrong everybody is about this. The source of this rumor came from a website that's known to publish baseless rumors. Plus, it seems like people forgot that people at Rockstar and Take-Two have said that they would never make a GTA movie. In 2013, about a week before GTA V was released, Dan Hauser talked about the fact that there was no possibility of ever having a movie based on GTA. Surprisingly, he mentioned that Rockstar have been approached several times by film studios. They've had companies knocking at their door who wanted to make Grand Theft Auto the movie, but Rockstar declined every time. Hauser told The Guardian, The money's never been close to being worth risking one's crown jewels. Our small dabblings with Hollywood have always left us running back to games. The freedom we have to do what we want creatively is of enormous value. The second you go near Hollywood, people seem willing or have been forced to lose a lot of that control. That sort of amorphous, that won't test well attitude is exactly how we don't work. We've always tried to think of stuff that's innovative and new, and to go into a world where that's not encouraged would be horrible. He went on to say, there's still plenty of kudos in doing a film, but you shouldn't ever do anything in your life for kudos. Interestingly, he did say that it's easier to imagine GTA as a TV series, and I can agree with that to an extent, but he also said that he doesn't see it being a thing that they'd ever do. Why have a TV show when you're only sitting there watching stuff happen on screen when you can play it as a video game and actually see your actions unfold? Not only that, a TV show can't last forever unless you're The Simpsons, and a lot of games can take a while to get through unless you speedrun them or if you're just one of those people who's in a hurry to rush through to 100%. Or in the case of GTA 4, Rockstar is offering you the key to the city if you beat the game to 100% completion within two weeks of game's release. But besides that, with TV shows, you have individual seasons, and everything still has to be condensed into about 12 hours for that one season. So why condense anything when you can just experience things organically on your own time? That's not just the beauty of Grand Theft Auto, that's the beauty of open world games in general. And it's part of why I'm such a fan of these types of games. Not only that, not counting Carmen Sandiego, how many successful shows were made that were based on video games? In the mid-2000s, Fox actually wanted shows based on Destroy All Humans. They also made a deal with Sims creator Will Wright to develop a TV show for their network. But neither of these shows happened. I could see Destroy All Humans maybe fitting in on Fox, and one of the writers from King of the Hill was working on it, so who knows, maybe it could have worked. But as for Will Wright's show, I don't know, there's no way that Fox approached him saying, hey, we want to make The Sims into a show. Could they have? Nah. I don't know, maybe the upcoming series for The Last of Us can be the outlier, though. Anyway, moving on from that, I know some of you might be thinking, well, sure, Dan Hauser can say all of that, but, uh-oh, Dan Hauser no longer works at Rockstar, does he? So what now? Well, last November, Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick stated explicitly that there would not be a GTA movie. He basically stated that when they do things, they like to have complete creative control over what's being made. And there's a huge issue regarding creative control. Zelnick said, You have the most valuable intellectual property ever created by mankind, Grand Theft Auto. We wholly own and control it. Are we really going to let go of that and hope that someone, no matter how talented they are, will really do a good job of it? And that just goes back to what Dan Hauser talked about. When Hollywood gets involved, suddenly changes have to be made to suit one thing or another. Either they go by focus group tests and try to just do what's popular, or some director or producer or ego of any kind who's involved in the project of the film will suddenly try to yank creative control out from under you and will force stuff in that they want to see that the original creators would have never considered adding. Imagine if they were to greenlight a movie based on GTA 4. The script is written and follows the events of the game fairly closely. Now enter the director. 
Suddenly, he starts demanding that certain scenes change or characters that we're familiar with begin acting out of character just because they think it makes a better movie. And then he says, We need to change Cluck and Bell to Taco Bell since we just secured a sponsorship deal. Also, Nico is going to be played by Tom Holland. So basically, Hauser and Zelnick were both worried that Hollywood was going to be Hollywood and Hollywood and up. But can you really blame them for thinking that? Laszlo mentioned in a keynote presentation in 2010 how the film industry pretty much consistently looked down upon the video game industry. So now it's like, hey, we got one of the biggest entertainment franchises on the planet, and guess what? We ain't sharing it. Screw you. Go make something original for once. Not only that, they're video game creators and publishers. The most experiences they've had with film were with the GTA 2 movie and The Football Factory starring Danny Dyer. Rockstar were listed as being the producers of The Football Factory alongside Vertigo Films, but the GTA 2 movie was made as a unique way to promote GTA 2. According to Jacked, it was shot in Brooklyn and it was kind of a hassle to film. It started pouring really badly at one point. They apparently didn't have all the proper filming permits. They were getting thrown out of places. That's Terry Donovan being beaten up in the chair, and there's Dan Hauser in the back of a mail truck. You know, it was actually quite good, and it has the feel of an indie movie that you'd find on cable TV late at night in the 2000s. I actually like it. And if you want to watch a GTA movie, this is the closest you'll get to an official one, because this is probably the furthest that Rockstar's ever gone into creating a movie of their own. And that was just for promotional purposes, and was an intro scene for the game. Now, if you really want a full-length GTA movie, then all I have to ask is... Why? We already have the game, and if you know anything about games that have movie adaptations, they're usually not very good. They made a Hitman movie that was mediocre, then they felt the need to make another one eight years later that turned out even worse. They made a Need for Speed movie with Aaron Paul that was like a dollar store version of Fast and Furious, when Fast and Furious is already turning itself into a dollar store version of Fast and Furious. And let's not forget what they did to Max Payne. I mean, maybe it's not a bad movie if you never played the game before? I remember this time I was with my dad, and we were watching TV, and I let him pick what we were watching that morning, and Max Payne was on TV. He liked it just because it was Mark Wahlberg running around shooting at bad guys. He didn't know it was a game. But I could tell when we were watching that it was straying pretty far from the game's plot. I mean, come on, they made Valkyr blue, and BB was the main antagonist instead of just being a corrupt DEA agent that you eventually face off with in a parking garage. Plus, there's the whole fact that these things appear. Yeah, you remember that scene from the game? I sure don't. Not only that, it's set in New York, but it's clearly filmed in Toronto. They did a really bad job of portraying New York on film. That's already too clean of a subway station for New York. New York also doesn't have active streetcar lines, either. I was in New York two days before, and I could instantly tell that the movie was not filmed anywhere there. So when I was watching it with my dad, I mentioned that it was based on a video game. And I think he was so into the movie because he was like, Wait, they made a video game about this? And I was like, no, the video game came out first, then they made the movie. And he was like... Oh, well, the movie's probably better. <sighs> I love you, Dad. Bear in mind, these are just a few of the many movies based on games, and not all are bad, I'm sure. I heard the Sonic movie wasn't as bad as people thought it would be, even though Jim Carrey as Robotnik is probably the saving grace of the film anyway. But maybe Sonic works in the same way that Detective Pikachu worked. It's a simpler film based on a more cartoony franchise, it's easy to turn something like that into a profitable, halfway decent movie. And people will probably take their kids to go and watch it, and the kids will enjoy it regardless. Even though I saw a VHS tape of the Super Mario Brothers movie when I was a kid, and I thought the movie was weird as hell, but that's not the point. The point is, movies that are based on more violent franchises with adults as the target audience don't seem to work that well. So why risk it with an official GTA movie? Do you really want your memories of the game to be soured any more than they could be when you see that flying bikes and orbital cannons are in GTA Online? Is it really all that necessary to have a movie based on the game? And do you really trust Hollywood to do a good job with it? So, with all that said, if you want a GTA movie, watch the GTA 2 movie from 1999. It's already on YouTube, and it's quite good. But if you want to see a feature-length film that reminds you of GTA or has elements of GTA in it, then I'll leave you with a few recommendations of my own. Falling Down if there was ever a movie based on random rampages that you can go on in GTA, this would be it. It starts as a very angry man abandons his car, starts getting into fights with random people, eventually acquires stronger and stronger weapons as time goes on, before he eventually gets a rocket launcher, and at the end he has to face the fact that his rage and anger against the world has given him a pretty high wanted level. Only instead of the military, they've sent Robert Duvall after him. Die Hard with a Vengeance this is one of my favorite Die Hard movies, and I also consider it to be among one of my favorite movies in general. 
You can never go wrong with a pairing of Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson, especially because this is from an era when Bruce Willis actually cared about what he was doing. This is like if you had a movie based on any timed mission in GTA where you're having to drive like a maniac across the city. Plus, they drive a stolen taxi through Central Park, who hasn't done that in GTA 4 at least once. And at one point, McLean only has a small pistol on him, and he faces off against a helicopter with a machine gun on it. If you ever manage to take down a helicopter in GTA using only a pistol and one very well-placed shot, you know how good this feels. Heat. This is basically where they got the idea for GTA 5 from. Now go watch it. Scarface. This is basically where they got half the idea for GTA Vice City from. Now go watch that too. Now, GTA was heavily inspired by films, and there's plenty more that inspired the games. Boys in the Hood, Goodfellas... And then you have individual missions with moments inspired by movies like Con Air, GoldenEye, Terminator 2, Ocean's Eleven. Since we have all of these movies that portray on film everything that GTA already has in its gameplay, what can a GTA movie have to set itself apart? It'd need a really good story, but if it's gonna be that good of a story, wouldn't you rather be in control and play through it yourself instead of just sitting there watching it? That's my thoughts on this at least, but what are yours? As always, let me know, and thanks for watching, and thank you for sitting through my little rant on video game movies as well, I appreciate it.